you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. It's Sabbath school time. It's Sabbath school time. We're glad you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. Hello. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for bringing us to another Sabbath school online so that we may serve you and do what you would want us to do so that we may honor you. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our song service. time with them, the entire family spends time with them, they are very good watchdogs. They protect you and they protect the entire family. 
and they create a special bond with one person in particular. So the one that spends most time with them, probably feeds them, grooms them, plays with them, is the one that you will get the closest to. Akitas are what you call large breed dogs. There are different, of course, dogs come in different breeds, different sizes. Um, they grow up to about three human years old. Um, their lifespan is between roughly 10 to 13 years, human years. But for them, that is a multiplied by seven because one human year is equivalent to seven dog years. So they live a pretty long life. Akitas are cold climate dogs, meaning they're not really accustomed or not bred for this for this climate that they live in. So they have two layer coats. Right now, he is shedding, so therefore you could probably see a lot of his coat coming out. That's because it's getting warmer, so his undercoat is coming out. But during the colder months of the year, um, he grows a second coat which is under this coat and it's a lot thicker. It usually keeps him cool in the winter. Um, as I said, he's eight months old and they grow very quickly. He was a very small puppy when I got him. He was seven weeks old. Um, at that age, he's very susceptible and very fragile. So you have to keep him safe from rodents, from pests, everything like that. So the area that you're keeping, you have to disinfect, you have to clean. Um, you have to make sure you also feed him at least two times a day so that he can build the strength that is needed for him, for his boy to be able to withstand any viruses. Each, each dog usually get shots to protect them from different viruses that they, that they could get. The main virus that most dogs get is called parvo, but also they can get stuff like leptospirosis and you know other sicknesses like that. So they usually give them four shots which come in between a space of let's say a month between every shot three weeks to a month and by the age of four months they would have received all their shots then after one year they receive another a final shot which is quite similar to us because as small children we get a vaccinations as well to protect us from different diseases and illnesses just like with human beings essential exercise is very essential for for dogs and for pets um, you have to make sure that Akitas are high energy dogs so you have to take them for regular walks to burn off that steam burn off that energy also it's very important to integrate them with other dogs let them interact with other dogs similar to how you will go to school and you will play with other children you make friendships dogs are the same dogs have something called pack mentality they operate very well in packs, in large numbers. They hunt in packs, um, they play in packs. That's the nature of them. So as I was saying about the nutrition, as he grows older, you will, feel, you will feed him less to make sure he doesn't become overweight. You would, as I said, you will exercise him. And I will do a brief demonstration of how you could get some exercise to walking or running with your dog. children that's a brief demonstration of how you can walk or run with your dog another important point I will make is you don't bathe dogs as often as we would bathe the way how we would bathe morning and evening they have a coat this coat is a protection for the skin which is under and if you bathe them too often you damage the coat so the bear how we bathe morning and evening dogs is debatable because people have their own theories their own ideas but you generally don't bid a dog more than once every two to three weeks. Some people bid them once a month. Some people bid them once every few months. But it depends on the conditions the dog is in, the type of coat he has, and I guess your preference, the type of shampoo you're using and everything. Another important point is dogs don't sweat like we do. You might see me sweating right now from walking with him 
but they don't sweat like we do. They they sweat by panting. If you look at his mouth carefully, you can see you can see his tongue hanging out his mouth, and that is how they sweat. That is how they put out uh, the toxins from the body. You see over this spot here, it's called a harness. Um, it takes the pressure from off his neck when you're walking him. Usually, we hook the leash, this is called a leash. We hook the leash onto the collar so that you have control when walking him, so you could guide him. But sometimes it injures the neck. So you buy a harness to take the pressure off the neck so it's easier to maneuver and take him around without causing any injury. So boys and girls, um, these are a few items that I give him. Remember, it's important to make sure he has good nutrition. Just like us, he has to receive vitamins to help build his body. So he can be big and strong. He can fight off infections. You know, because as he gets older, he can develop stuff like cancers and stuff like that. Just like whole human beings do. So we make sure we put him on vitamins as well and it's very important to take control of the feeding time because when you feed him you want to make sure he doesn't get aggressive with you so make sure you practice him or you train him to wait on you before you give him the meal before he eats sit him down and make sure you wait, he waits on your command also these are this is a comb slash rake that i use to help groom his coat keeps him cool remember i told you that this time of year he typically sheds so that under coat comes out so what we do we buy a comb this this one has different extensions um i use this part to comb out the under coat and then i groom him with the different you can use the different parts that you want to use to to groom it accordingly as you feel comfortable so that was a short nature feature on dogs i hope you guys enjoyed until next time boys and girls just as Uncle Johnson takes special care of his dog, God takes special care of us. And we know that he is always around even when we need him. So we hope you enjoyed it and thank Uncle Johnson and the cameraman Zachary. It's now time for the special music from Caden. She is singing. We gather together. Hello everyone, I will be singing We Gather Together.
we all have a mission story from Monique, who will tell you how she has been a missions, missionary in this COVID-19 lockdown. Hi everyone, a blessed and wonderful Sabbath to you all. Today's mission story is about prayer. Proverbs 20, 22 6 says, Prayer a child in the way he shall go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. My mommy is always teaching me and reminding me to always pray, no matter where I am and what I am going to do. During, during this time, with everything going on in the world, I am learning to pray more and I am also able to be a missionary for God by teaching my cousin about prayer. During this time, I am spending my days doing online school at my auntie with my cousins. My cousins don't go to church and he only would pray the prayers he was taught at school. But but by seeing and hearing me prayer and telling him about what God expects of us, he is learning to pray to God from his heart. He is also learning to be more polite and kind, even to strangers. Here is a picture of my cousin and I kneeling in prayer. So this is my cousin and this is I. So we are praying to God. Mummies and daddy, boys and girls, we all need to pray one for another and teach everyone about God. Love. Goodbye. Hope I see you next time. Hello. Now we'll have a special music from Joshua. Christ alone. song from Ariana which is you are the funny
Bobby is going to give us a fun little feature about pigeons. He released pigeons some time ago and they flew up into the air high and swarmed around and we, it was so beautiful. Here we have a, a Brazil hen. You can see it by its color, brown and thing. Now, when I let go of this thing, this thing will fly back home in a matter of about half an hour. This is called a, a racing homer, a check racing homer. It's a cock. It's about three months old. And when I release him, he will we, he will fly back home. It will take about half an hour to reach back home. When I leave from up here and I get home, I will see, see him in the on top of the house or on the paint. They used racing homers in World War II to help send messages from way out. When the soldiers were out in the far country, they would write a message and put it on the bird feet, and they would release the bird, and the bird would fly back to England and deliver the message. And the people would know exactly where the enemy is and where the soldiers are and they was able to um, send planes to help deliver them from the Germans or to help them in the war. And even today, there is news racing homers in India. They're called boomerangs. And these racing homers is also deliver messages in the far parts of India today. So racing homers are still useful today in flying. And they are also beautiful birds. They are very intelligent birds as well. Where St. Homer's have a lot of intelligence. They can find home from anywhere.
just as Uncle Bobby told the story of the pigeons, even though he did, it reminds us that even though the sparrows don't get, don't plant anything, they still get fed by Jesus. And that teaches us that God is love. God's love is eternal and he loves every single one of us. Now we will have Kiana and Zakaria singing when he cometh. Paying attention because Detano will give us our quiz for the whole quarter. Okay, boys and girls, it is now time for your end of quarter quiz. This means that all of the questions will be taken from any of the chat the, the lessons throughout this entire quarter. So I hope you are ready for the quiz. Number one, what was King, the name of King Solomon's son who reigned after him? What was the name of King Solomon's son who reigned after him? Okay, if you said Rehoboam, you would be correct. Very good boys and girls. All right, on to number two. Was he wise like his father Solomon? Was King Rehoboam wise like his father Solomon? Yes or no? Sadly, no. He was not wise like his father Solomon. He listened to some young, inexperienced people and he made bad decisions. That's really sad. Okay, boys and girls, on to number three. Question number three. What was the name of the king of Judah? Listen carefully. What was the name of the king of Judah who started out as a good king, but then he turned away from God? And I'm going to give you a hint. He was Jehoshaphat's father. What's the hint? He was Jehoshaphat's father. He started out as a good king, but he ended up as a bad king. What was his name? Think about it. He was King Asa. If you said Asa, you would be correct. Okay, now on to question number four. Was Jehoshaphat a good king or a bad king? Remember his father, King Asa, was a bad king. Do you think Jehoshaphat was a good king or a bad king? If you said good, that he was a good king, you would be correct. Very, very good. All right. Number five. What is the name of the king who was hid, hidden in the temple as a little boy? What is the name of the king who was hidden in the temple as a little boy? And a priest, the priest hid him because there was a wicked queen who was going to kill out everybody all the males so that they would not become king and she could reign as queen for as long as she wanted or as long as she lived 
So they hid this boy in the temple. What was his name? His name was Joash. Very, very good. All right. Now on to number six. Still talking about Joash. How old was Joash when he became king? Now, the priest took Joash out one day when he thought it was time and he put the crown on his head and he made him king. How old was Joash when he became the king? Was he six years? Was he 23 years? How old was he? He was just seven years. If you said seven, you got it correct. Very good boys and girls. All right, number seven. What was the name of Hezekiah's mother? What was the name of Hezekiah's mother? Now, Hezekiah's father before him was wicked, but he had a very godly mother who taught him about God. What was her name? What was the name of King Hezekiah's mother? Her name was was Abijah, Abijah, A-B-I-J-A-H, Abijah, and she was a godly woman, and she taught King Hezekiah about God. All right, doing good so far. We have about hmm, four more questions to go. All right, number eight. What was the name of the boy who became the king of Judah at age eight. What was the name of the boy who became the king of Judah at age eight? Do you want a hint, boys and girls? Or can you get it done by yourself? I'll give you a hint in any case. His name begins with the letter J. What was the name of the king of Judah who began, the boy who began reigning as the king of Judah at age eight. His name is Josiah. Okay, very good boys and girls, we're doing fantastic. All right, on to question number nine. Well, that was question number eight. So on to question number nine. An angel put a coal you know what's a coal? A burning, probably was a piece of wood or something like that. A coal on a prophet's lips so that he could go and give a message. What was the name of that prophet? Mm, all right, time's up. The name of the prophet was Isaiah. So the angel put a burning coal on Isaiah's lip and he gave him a message to go and tell God's people. All right, question number 10. Which king's hand withered after he tried to attack a prophet because he came and gave him a message that he didn't want to hear? So he jumped forward to attack this king, this prophet, sorry. This king jumped forward to attack this prophet and his hand withered up. What was the name of that king? Jeroboam was his name. Jeroboam was the name of the king whose hand withered when he tried to attack God's prophet. All right, now on to number 11. Now, Babylon came and the Babylonian army came and surrounded Jerusalem for a period of time. How long did the armies of Babylon surround Jerusalem? Was it two months? Was it two days? Was it two years? How long did they surround Jerusalem? Yep. It was two long years that they surrounded or besieged Jerusalem. And nobody could go in or nobody could go out. 
that's a very, very long time. All right, question number 12. Now, the Babylonian army, they did defeat Judah and they took some people hostage or, well, captive should be the better word. They took some people captive and they took them back and they took Daniel and three of his friends with him. What? were the Hebrew names of Daniel's three friends that were taken with him to Babylon. Now, many of us remember their Babylonian names because when they went to Babylon, they were given Babylonian names. But their Hebrew names, do you know the names, the Hebrew names of Daniel's three friends? Let's think about it. The three names are Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. I mean, usually we refer to them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But their Hebrew names are Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All right, that was question number... 12 I believe and our final question for the evening our final question for the evening and for this quarter is did Daniel and his friends stand out as witnesses or missionaries for God in Babylon now remember, they were taken as prisoners away from their family. They were taken as captives away from their families. And they were taken to the courts of Babylon because they were bright. Do you think they stood out as missionaries in the courts of Babylon? Do you think they stood out as missionaries for God? Yes or no? Yes, boys and girls. Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, stood out as missionaries for God. You too can stand out as missionaries for God. Now we'll have a reading a special text from. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I give my talent to God so that he can use it in the service for him. I have dedicated my talent to God. Why have I have dedicated them to God? Because God gave me those talents. And if we don't believe in God, the talent is like worth nothing. Because if you have no talent, uh, have a talent, but you don't use it in God's work, it'll just be like having money, but the money is not worth anything. Now we will play the Snow My Snow.
kind of giving us a mission story from life growing up in a mission family. Well, most missionary families begin their journeys by traveling to foreign countries. But my siblings and I were born into one, and I am still a missionary today at home. My earliest memories was at the age of three. My dad was leading a series of nightly evangelistic meetings in the neighboring village, and I remember joining him while he sang one of my favorite songs in Christ alone. Over the years, I've been able to help my family with many other programs just like this and much more. Since we did all of this, I got the opportunity to travel to different places with my family. From seminars, outings, camping trips, ministering to different churches and schools, visiting the elderly, sharing tracts and literature door to door, and playing music for the sick both here and in foreign countries. I also attend a missionary school called Final Generation Mission Academy, where both my parents are teachers. This is a wonderful blessing. Here I am learning how to deny self and learn to be a missionary like just like Jesus. My contribution to the work is playing my instruments and singing. This is my personal favorite and my violin and guitar go everywhere I go. As 14 years old, sometimes it could be difficult. My friends don't always understand. Sometimes I don't understand the choices of my parents. But day by day, I'm learning to trust them and to trust God. I love being part of a missionary family like this and learning about Jesus. Our motto is taken from Joshua 24:15. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this is from Hannah Charles, Trinidad and Tobago. Bye! Now we will have our help feature from Jodel about bananas. Health is important because God loves health because it helps us to understand Him fully. And when we understand Him fully, we can share His love to other people. And God wants us to have a healthy body and a healthy mind. Let's have boys and girls. Remember me, Jodel. And today's health tip is about bananas. Here are five benefits of bananas. One, it promotes healthy bones. Two, it decreases depression. Three, it helps you go to the washroom. Four, it helps you build up your blood. Now we will have Moni doing a poem that was written by her mommy, Auntie Stacy. 
trust me. When you're climbing a giant hill and your friend extends his arm to help you, he's saying, trust me. When you fall and can't get up and a stranger extends his arm to help you, he say, he's saying, trust me. When something goes wrong and you wish you had a friend to talk to and you heard a sweet quiet voice say, trust me, you can talk to me. When all earthly hope is lost, there will always be one person, oh yes, one person, the only true friend any one of us can and will have that we can always trust in. Yes, God always says, trust me. Now we will have a mission story from Auntie Tanya and a special guest who you will find about in the mission story. Afternoon, or well, well it's here well, what time is it? it's now 3 29 where i am it's 10 and 29 p.m yes so that's seven hours ahead of us mm -hmm. and this is my friend laura hi and she's currently serving as a missionary and i'll let you laura i'll let you tell um everyone where you're serving now okay i am a missionary volunteer in romania so um where is romania um, for those who don't know, Romania is an Eastern European country. Um, some of the countries that are close by are Turkey, Croatia, Hungary, um, Greece, and some others that are close by, Ukraine, and some others that are close by. This um, is one of the few um, synagogues that are there and unfortunately is not even in operation. This is in Turgumoresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the town behind the, this is the town hall. And I hope I got to go inside. Oh, I didn't get to go inside. So this is one of the town, the same town hall. And it's really beautiful inside. Um, in Eastern Europe, they have a lot of architecture. The architecture is very defined. And I like their architecture kind. Of, it is very, European or Victorian in his, in his look. Yes, yeah. I like it as well. <laughs> yeah. So I understand. What <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this was the view from Sigishwara. Unfortunately, I didn't have it in order, but this is the view from the tower where we went to in Sigishwara. And this is the view of the whole village. Okay. And as you can see, most of Transylvania is very mountainous or hilly. Um, this is inside the greenhouses, and if you know, can you tell me what plant do you think that is? Looks like cucumbers. It is cucumbers, and we plant um, cucumbers because the school I'm volunteering at is self-supporting, so we grow cucumbers to sell to the supermarkets here in Interview Moresh. Okay, wonderful. Um, this is the forest close to the school. One thing I like about Romania is that they thrive on nature. So they take long, lots of walks, they, um, they enjoy and they keep, they have a good of their, na their natural habitats around them. So you find lots of forest trails, you find, there are lots of bears and deers and hares. <laughs> well, uh, they're coming from Barbados where the scariest thing <laughs> it's probably an insect. No, it's centipede. centipede. <laughs> they call the name. <laughs> um, I think for me, knowing that they that they are more afraid of us <laughs> than we are of them, kind of gives you some kind of comfort. Recently, we had bears come in on the campus and stealing our honey. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, but we didn't see them. I haven't, we haven't seen them, but we just saw the destruction the next day. Okay. First, for me, everywhere in Romania is cold. <laughs> but I said in the summer. The summers are hot. The winters are cold. Okay. Yeah. So what was the coldest temperature? Because you've been there for how long now? I, approximately a year and a half. The coldest temperature I've had is minus 15 degrees. Minus 15. Minus 15. 
Yes, and at 21, we are here freezing in Barbados. I tell them so, and they look at, they look at me very strangely. They're like, what? <laughs> yes. It's like, <laughs> it's different because, obviously, of the humidity, because hair is more dry. I've been static shocked many times <laughs> if we say something here, which is something we don't hear about in Barbados because of our humidity. So the drier the air, the more static shock you get. Okay. Which is something I learned when I was here. Okay. Yes, and, I'm learning. Yes. And this last the one, I think this is maybe one of my last pictures. This is a cat, one of the castles. I cannot remember if it is called Dracula's Castle, but they filmed a lot of movies, a lot of the Hallmark movies at this castle. It's very beautiful, wherever yeah. it is. And this, as I was telling you about the mountains, if you can look closely, you can see snow on the mountain over there in the background. Okay. So we hiked to the top of this mountain and we could have seen the, there was a lake somewhere down here. There's a lake um, on the other side, sorry. But you okay. can see, you can basically see um, the difference or the greenery. Um, you can see the difference in landscape as it purports to Barbados. We're here at the top is more rocky and stuff. Below you have more grass and meadows. And Barbados, okay. you don't have anything like this. No. No. What made you want to become a missionary? Um, okay, I found it. Okay. What made me want to become a missionary? Well, in 2012, 11 a friend, me and another friend we had planned to go on a short missionary trip um to guyana um we were going to spend a month at a school volunteer for a month at a school in burbies however my aunt got a heart attack and i ended up going to stay with her for a short time and i didn't go um then i came back to barbados from saint lucia my a friend of mine a very close friend asked me if she, if I was still interested because I wasn't really working if I was still interested in going and that she and her family would um sponsor me to go so mm -hmm. you know the first part was a trial phase and then um little by little more and more I spent time and I spent three basically three and a half years in Guyana um I felt, always felt impressed um and called to do the Lord's work and especially to work with young people. Um, back home in my church, I work with the Pathfinders. I teach the youth class um, and I generally love young people. That's fantastic. So right now, um, based on what you've said so far, I take it that you're a missionary doing work with young people. Yes, right now I am a, a math teacher teaching high school in Romania, teaching at a high school, Literal uh, Internationale Integritas. That is, we teach students between the ages of 15, 14, well, they come in at 14, so 14 basically to 18 plus. Um, so then you talked about Guyana. So how did you get from Guyana back to Barbados and then from Barbados to Romania? Well, after my last stint in doing missionary work, um, I worked for um, someone from my church for about three and a half years. Um, I was getting a little bit restless again, and I was praying to the Lord, and I asked the Lord, Lord, I would really like to go back in the mission field. If you have me to go, please show me where to go and open up okay. the doors. So there was an opportunity. I could have gone straight to Argentina from Guyana but mm -hmm. I didn't and I was there and then I had another opportunity to go to, then I had an opportunity that opened up to come to Romania. So there were two opportunities, there were two times that I got the call to come to Romania. So the first time, I think it was October 2006, either 16 or 17, I think it was 17. And the lady that was the principal was in Guyana. She was trying to get her adoption papers for her daughter. And um, they were looking for an English teacher at the time. 
But I was like him and hawing, should I spend three months? Should I spend a year? Different things like that. Um, and then she got through with her papers, so she ended up coming. She, so she ended up coming. So I said, okay. And then the other opportunity came up um, where the math teacher here was leaving and they were looking for a math teacher. <laughs> so the opportunity opened up for me to come here. So I answered the call because then I recognized the Lord did want me here in Romania. Okay. okay, that's fantastic. So for young people, especially little children mm -hmm. who are saying, well, this is missionary. When they hear about missionary, they think of somebody extra special mm -hmm. and only certain people can be missionaries. How would you, t what would you say to little children who want to be missionaries, who think that, but I can be a missionary? Okay. One of the first things that I was told when it was in Guyana was, whatever you decide to become in life, put the word missionary in front of it. So if you plan to become a doctor, say I, I want to be a mission doctor, because yes, we sometimes think of people um, being, you know, going to exotic places that they've never heard of and stuff like that. But it must first start uh, um, wherever you are. So if I'm home, I can minister home. And it starts there. Um, a missionary um, dentist, a missionary teacher, a missionary pilot, a missionary um, nurse, whatever you decide to become in life, um, put the word missionary in front of it. It sounds, sounds kind of far-fetched. You know, it's like, how can I be a missionary garbage collector? if you decide to be that, right? But you can minister to people on your job. You can minister to people um, that you meet every day. You are, the word missionary basically is, well, it is broken down into two, well, one word that we came in now, um, the mission. So what you have to decide what your mission is. The mission is, our mission as Christians is to spread the good news of Jesus. So, whatever you decide to be it's like i wherever i am whatever facet i am in life i am going to spread the good news of jesus either by my lifestyle or by telling people who he is or both <laughs> well both yeah and that's what we were talking about um before we were talking about being stay-at-home missionaries so i'm really glad that you brought that out that anybody could be a missionary and everybody who's called to be well who chooses to be a Christian is actually called to be a missionary. So a missionary isn't someone super special, but just a regular person. Yes. I remember there's a saying that we always say, the best sermon that you can preach is by the life that you live. And people see you, see your actions. Um, there are millions and thousands, well, not in Barbados, <laughs> thousands of people who need to hear the good news of Jesus who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, who want, whose needs, they are need, who have needs to be met. For example, they're hungry people. There are people that need clothes. There are people that need somewhere to live. How can we meet some of their needs wherever we are? That's the question that we have to ask. Yes, I'm really glad that you brought that up so that everybody could understand, especially the children can understand that even if you're at school and somebody, you see somebody looking lonely, you have a pencil to share, just something, any small thing, that's an act of service which a missionary is. A missionary on who's serving others and sharing the gospel. Yes. So you're there as a missionary by yourself. So sometimes, you know, it might get a bit lonely. So how do you deal with being lonely um, as a missionary? Because we don't, being a missionary, you don't have to go by yourself. You can go with family, but you don't have to depend on people. You can go by yourself. So as someone who's gone by themselves, as someone who might be wishing to go by themselves, what would you say? There are pros and cons of being a... Um single missionary one of the pros is obviously you don't have to answer to anyone if you want to pick up and go you can go in the drop of a hat um the con is then when things get tough it's hard there's no one that you can rely on i mean we know it's god there's god and that's the best person to rely on but it's hard not having the companion to say okay uh, things are hard 
I need somebody to cry to <laughs> or cry on because God has created, <laughs> created us as social beings and we do long that social interaction sometimes. And there are times when, you know, you don't have that person to be there for you. Yes, I have my friends and I could call and message Tanya and say, Auntie Tanya and say, yes, Auntie Tanya, things are hard. Um, but um, it's, it's nice, both of, I guess both of them, both, both aspects of, I should I say aspect? Both points are having, being single, let me rephrase it, being single and also being um, married and in the mission field has its pros and cons. For young people specifically who say they want to go into the mission field, how would you, what would you advise them? Pray about it first. <laughs> um, obviously, I know all of God has the particular place for you in mind. I just pray and ask. As I said, it could be home or it could be far away. Um, if things get tough, pray, pray more. Um, God uses every situation to be a character building experience. And we also we always have to ask God, okay, what are you trying to work out in inside of me? If it is more patience, if it is more love, more forgiveness. Because I could tell you when I first got here, the students weren't really nice. But I had a student apologize the other day and said, Miss Laura, I recognize that I wasn't nice to you when I first got here, and I'm sorry. And because one of my prayers to the Lord when I first got here was, Lord, help me to love the unlovable <laughs> because it was that tough. But um, pray about it. Ask the Lord for guidance. Ask the Lord for strength. Ask the Lord for um, choosing where to go. And may, if, if it is possible, who to go with. It could be with friends or it could be by yourself. Um, and the Lord will work it out if it is his will for you to go. He will work out the particular place for you um, to be. Yes, and adding on to that, you don't have to be rich to be a missionary, as no. you said. No, work it out. <laughs> no, um, no, um, I am not rich by any means <laughs> or anything. Um, and I've seen the how the Lord works. Um, I've also seen Him multiply my talents since I've been in the mission field. Um, one of the th one of the ways he has um, multiplied my talents is my love of craft. Um, for example, I make cards. <laughs> Oops. Well, this is this was just a um, thing because I don't want to stick it on yet. But I make cards. Oh, nice. Know? That that was one of my things. I oh, yeah, I make cards. So okay. that's what I do in my spare time that I really don't have much of. <laughs> but yeah, I, he increased my love of art. He increased my ability to cook. <laughs> well, I could always cook, but my <laughs> love of vegetarian and vegan cooking. Um, he also, the many other times he has increased. Um, and I'm thankful for, to the Lord for that. Now, speaking of talents, I, yes, I know one of your talents is singing. Um, is there a special song that you would like to um, share with the young people? Because I know you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> um, we were talking um, to the children about using their talents in missionary work. So even if they don't get to leave Barbados or leave wherever they live, they can still use their talents for God. So... Um, yes, I know you have a wonderful voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can sing one of my, my the first verse of one of my favorite hymns, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Okay. It always touches my heart whenever I hear it, whenever I sing it. Um, I think most songs you should, should minister to you before you can minister to someone else. And that song does minister to me. I'll sing the first verse. You put me on the spot, Tanya. You put me on the spot. 
Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing your grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, calls for sounds of loudest praise. Teach me someday, Lord, your sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the name I'm fixed upon it, name of thy redeeming love. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Laura, for sharing um, about being a missionary and for sharing that beautiful song. Um, no yes, you touched by it, <laughs> and I'm sure everybody was touched by it. So Thank you for sharing with us about being a missionary. No problem. Um, before we go, um, is there any one thing that has stood out to you, any story, any experience that has really touched you, not only in being a missionary where you are now in Romania, but maybe in your experiences before in um, Guyana, or even when you were home here in Barbados, being a home missionary, something that really stood out to you and touched you because you know, sometimes we think being a missionary, we are the ones who are only touching others. But sometimes doing missionary work, we ourselves, when we are doing missionary work, we are really touched by um, different things. So just one, before you go, one thing that really touched you, one experience. That touched me. Wow, I can just say from at least one, something that's recent. Um, I have students that write me cards, not only here in Romania, but in, uh, when I was in Guyana, you know, and this, you know, they try to encourage you. You know, say where God guides, he provides. If you can, can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, where God, and it was a really nice text and she, the, the, the young lady left a, uh, a verse inside and said with love. So all of these things are encouragements. Um, I am thankful for the, all the experiences I had, um, the people I would have met, um, those who shaped and molded my life, even the bad or the worse. There are things that the Lord, I know the Lord used them to help shape who I am. Um, I love all of the children I would have met but it was in the mission field. Now, now most of them are women and men. <laughs> it was in Guyana, but um, mm -hmm. I am particularly close with one young lady. Um, she would tell me and she would encourage me when it was in Guyana. She would pull up my gray hair on a Sunday. <laughs> if she said <laughs> any. Um, and I adopted her kind of like a daughter or a niece. Um, I am praying for her because I really wanted her to go into the mission field. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. And the culture where we were, um, most of the young people fall out of church or fall out of um, loving God or they end up pregnant. Or thing. And she's still there. She's not any of those things yet. And I'm praying for her. Um, pray for her also. Um, I have an experience where I could say God even allowed this me to come to Guyana, to Romania for a reason. There was a young gentleman, a young boy I met when I was in Guyana, he's a man now. Um, and this is how I say God really led me here. Um, I haven't, I haven't seen him when he, after he left school. He left school in full form to go back to the United States because that's where he was from. And um, I was like, okay. And in one of the meetings we had, I met his mother. So I was okay. able to connect. I was able to connect with her and connect with him. And I was happy for that experience, you know. And I am thankful that the Lord has led me back, I guess, hopefully to be a positive influence in his life. Even though we're million, thousands of miles away. That is wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that experience. And Laura, Auntie Laura, thank you for talking to us. It is now past 11 by you. <laughs> so thank you for allowing us to um, wake up your night's sleep. 
to no do this. My times, my time, as you know, as I tell you all the time, I'm normally very, very busy. And the best time to do everything is and everything is mellowing down. So it was always a pleasure. May the Lord bless your ministry also, Auntie Tanya. And the Lord bless you as you continue to serve and he gives you strength and we turn you back safely. <laughs> Very much, hopefully. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, too. We want to thank all the people who participated in the program, especially the boys and girls. We thank all the adults and all the parents and thank them for being missionaries, even online, even on YouTube, or even on their own website. We thank them for being missionaries. We have come to an end of the Endery Quarter. Hope you have enjoyed it. Now we shall pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the end of quarter program that we had. Hope everyone was blessed. Thank you that you were able to learn some help and learn about nature and learn about you, how you take care of us. And thank you for the Sabbath that has ended at the end of quarter. And thank you and help us to be missionaries for you. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye. Until another Sabbath, we say goodbye to you. Goodbye, goodbye to you. Goodbye, goodbye to you. Until another Sabbath, we say goodbye to you.